Now, just to be clear, if the professor does levitate you, Dad, when you know you haven't been attached to any wires, that's going to be sufficient evidence. You're not going to turn around and say that it's a magician's trick. If you feel that way, you should say so now, so we can figure out a different experiment instead. And you, Mum, your theory says that the professor should be able to do this, and if that doesn't happen, you'll admit you're mistaken. Deputy Headmistress Minerva McGonagall was watching Harry with a bemused expression. Is that sufficient, Mr. Potter? Sufficient? Probably not. But at least it will help. Go ahead, Deputy Headmistress. Just Professor will do. Wingardium Leviosa. Harry looked at his father. Huh. His father looked back at him. Huh. Then Professor Varus Evans looked back at Professor McGonagall. All right, you can put me down now. Harry ruffled a hand through his own hair. Maybe it was just that strange part of him which had already been convinced, but... That's a bit of an anticlimax. You'd think there'd be some kind of more dramatic mental event associated with updating on an observation of infinitesimal probability. Harry stopped himself. Mum, McGonagall, and even his dad were giving him that look again. I mean, with finding out everything I believe is false. Seriously, it should have been more dramatic. Would you like a further demonstration, Mr. Potter? You don't have to. We've performed a definitive experiment. But... Harry hesitated. He couldn't help himself. Actually, under the circumstances, he shouldn't be helping himself. It was right and proper to be curious. What else can you do? Professor McGonagall turned into a cat. You can't do that! At once, the small tabby morphed back up into a robed woman. I'm sorry, Mr. Potter. I should have warned you. You turned into a cat! A small cat! You violated conservation of energy! That's not just an arbitrary rule! It's implied by the form of the quantum Hamiltonian! Rejecting it destroys unitarity! And cats are complicated! A human mind can't just visualize a whole cat's anatomy and... and all the cat biochemistry! Magic isn't enough to do that! You'd have to be a god! That's the first time I've ever been called that. A blur was coming over Harry's vision as his brain started to comprehend what had just broken. The whole notion of physics. 3,000 years of resolving big complicated things into smaller pieces, finding that the true laws were perfectly universal and had no exceptions anywhere and took the form of simple math, and then a woman turned into a cat. So much for all that. He pulled his thoughts together. The march of reason would just have to start over, that was all. They still had the experimental method, and that was the important thing. How do I get to Hogwarts, then? Hold on a moment, Harry. What about your condition? His condition? What's this? I don't sleep right. My sleep cycle is 26 hours long. I always go to sleep two hours later, every day. 10 p.m., 12 a.m., 2 a.m., 4 a.m., until it goes around the clock. That's why I haven't been attending a regular school up until now. One of the reasons, I'll check with Madame Pomfrey to see if she knows any remedies. I'm sure this won't be a problem. Now, what are these other reasons? I am a conscientious objector to the child draft, on the grounds that I should not have to suffer for a continually disintegrating school system's abject failure to provide teachers or study materials of even minimally adequate quality. Oh, is that why you bit a math teacher in third year? She didn't know what a logarithm was! Of course! Biting her was a very mature response to that. I was seven years old! How long are you going to keep on bringing that up? <laughs> there, uh, there... There is to be no biting of teachers at Hogwarts. Fine, I won't bite anyone who doesn't bite me first. Well, I think, under the circumstances, that I should avoid taking you to purchase your study materials until a day or two before school begins. What? Why? I suspect, Mr. Potter, that if I leave you alone for two months with your school books, even without a wand, I will return to this house only to find a crater billowing purple smoke, a depopulated city surrounding it, and a plague of flaming zebras terrorizing what remains of England. Harry's mother and father nodded in perfect unison. Mom! Dad!